Hello, this is Dr. Jeff Dolgus, and today I want to talk a little bit about forward head posture and its relationship to TMJ dysfunction. And by TMJ dysfunction, I mean actual problems in the joint, not the myofascial symptoms necessarily that seem to accompany a lot of these conditions. Now, one of the things that we know about forward head posture is it's very common and it's probably becoming more common now because people are looking down a lot at their cell phones and other devices rather than standing up straight and looking ahead. So in order to reverse some of these patterns and tendencies that we have in our daily lives, I think it's a good idea to focus on your posture and implement certain exercises and practices into your daily routine as a matter of habit. Now it takes a little while in order to establish a habit. Studies show that it takes maybe 30 days, maybe longer to really dial that in because, and dial it in so that it becomes something you don't have to think about anymore. And something that, it's gotta be something that you look forward to and you enjoy doing or you'll just stop doing it. So what we see demonstrated on this model is a skull on a spine with the shoulders here with the paraspinal, cervical paraspinal muscles back here, going kind of between the vertebrae and the base of the skull. And these muscles hold the back of the head up in this sort of a position. So if my head comes forward like, like it is here, where the ear is sitting in front of the shoulder girdle, then my head, in order for me to see straight, is gonna to have to be pulled up like this. So my suboccipital muscles are gonna be tight and these muscles are gonna to have to stay tight in order to keep the head from falling forward. The other phenomenon that happens is because the head has to tip up like this, the muscles underneath the chin have a tendency to pull the chin backwards and open the mouth. So you can see as I lift up, the jaw opens. And what direction are these muscles pulling on the chin but in a mandibular direction, uh, uh, retraction direction, which can be very damaging to the jaw joint. In the jaw joint, you can see that here in between the condyle and the glenoid fossa, there's a disc represented by this little post right here. If the jaw is pulled backwards in a repetitive habitual fashion, then the back part of that disc becomes worn down and the condyle eventually slips off the back of the disc. And we call that an anterior disc dislocation, but a more appropriate name in my opinion would be a posterior condylar dislocation where the condyle is pulled repetitively toward the backside and off that disc. The correction to this is if we can begin to develop a posture with the head back here so that this dot representing the vertex and this dot representing the occiput are lined up at a right angle. The line of the eye is going forward and the ear is lined up above the shoulders. In this position, there's much less tension on these muscles here. The jaw can close very easily and when we open, the jaw is gonna come forward in order to open wide, pulling the condyle out of the fossa, taking the pressure off the posterior part of the jaw joint. So when we do these cervical retractions, it is helpful to move the chin forward like this so the front teeth are on the edges and we get the pressure off the jaw joint and we open up space here in the airway. Doing this protrusion of the mandible when you do your cervical retraction exercises will help to take the pressure off your joint structures. And if you can develop this as a habit over time, your jaw joints will thank you. Now, one of the things that comes up quite a bit in physical therapy are, is an exercise called a chin tuck or a cervical retraction. And I wanna focus on this today and show you a way to do it that'll keep the pressure off your jaw joints. And I wanna show you first why the jaw joints are sometimes connected to some of these forward head posture con uh, conditions. The reason that I see that is, seems primary as to why the jaw joints up here would exhibit symptoms or have pressure or, or develop inflammation because somebody's head is forward is because of the muscles in the front of the neck here. 
The muscles in the front of the neck control the jaw, and you'll notice that a lot of times when people have forward head posture, their mouth is also open. So they've kind of, they're kind of forward and their sort of head is tilted up, so it puts pressure in the back of the neck here, and it also pulls on these muscles underneath the neck. Now if you pull, if there's tension in these muscles trying to hold the head back, trying to resist this forward posture because the head is so heavy when it's out there, that's going to put tension on the jaw going backwards. Now the one movement that the jaw joints are not built to sustain is mandibular retraction. So the last thing that we want to do, in my opinion, is focus on tucking the chin like this. Because what that does is it pushes the mandible back toward the airway. It cuts off your trachea. It makes it difficult to breathe. It makes it feel like you're going to choke. So what I would do instead of that is rather than call it a chin tuck, I really like the terminology of cervical retraction. Because where we're focusing our attention then through our words is in the back of the neck area here, right up underneath the suboccipital region, right? So this is where we want to decompress some of the tension that can develop from that Atlanto occipital extension, which is the head kind of tilted this way. We want the back of the head to be pulled up and we want to stretch this area under here when we do our cervical retractions. But we also don't want the chin, the mandible, pushed back into this kind of double chinned uh, airway compressed posture that can be very uncomfortable. Especially if you have a TMJ problem, putting pressure back on the mandible often feels terrible and it's something you want to resist. If it feels terrible, you're not going to do it. So here's what I would suggest. When you do a cervical retraction and you pull your head back, allow your chin to go forward so that your front teeth, your lower teeth, move forward. If you have a normal bite where the lower teeth fit inside the upper teeth, then make it so those lower teeth have the opportunity to track forward at least to an edge to edge position, maybe even a little before that. For me, I don't have a strong chin horizontally this way. So it helps me in many ways to allow my chin to move forward this way when I do this exercise. So if I'm gonna pull my head back, it really feels a lot better for me to allow my chin to go forward. I can get my head to go back so much further with my chin forward. I can feel I can feel a stretch way down here between my shoulder blades when I do that exercise with my chin being allowed to drift forward. Now I wouldn't recommend that you push it real hard. You don't need to stretch your chin forward but it can help repeating this movement multiple times a day can help to reposition the lower jaw in a uh, posture a habitual posture that's more supportive of your airway and less damaging and detrimental to your jaw joints so i hope you find this version of the cervical retraction exercise helpful if you have any questions or comments please leave them below i'll get to them as i have time the best that i can I appreciate you being here, and if you want to see more content like this, please hit subscribe below. Also, I've recently put together a teachable course that's my 12-week TMJ Rehab Protocol. The first 100 people that sign up to, for the course will get half off.